Hey everybody, welcome to the 25th episode bah, 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 of World Building with DM Dave. Um, in the last couple of episodes, I have been building out the land of, or at least the region of La Breca, which is the name of the nation where they live. I don't know if this is all of La Breca, but uh, I think this is a pretty good start. It's at least going to be the duchy of the uh, duchess villain that I've created for uh, the game whose name I hope I wrote down. If I didn't, I didn't. Anyways, I'll get it. <laughs> I've got the Order of Phantoms, though. Or maybe I don't. Jeez. All right. I wrote it down somewhere. Anyways, we're going to be um, finishing up this map here so we can get it loaded into Roll20 and start making it look pretty. Um, probably really what I'm going to do is create um, a couple different versions of the map. One will have some of these features on it and another we'll have like a GM layer map where I can hide stuff as needed. Okay, so we are going to be in sort of a temperate European climate. That means we're probably going to have some uh, forests. I'm probably going to do a mix of deciduous and um, coniferous forests, kind of like the Black Forest in Germany. Uh, you know, we've got our river here. We've got a nice little mountain range with some interesting features or temples. So let's go ahead and get back under our stamp tool. I'm going to go into our catalog. I don't need to search all types anymore. What I need now are some trees. So we've got lots of different trees here. Uh, we've got uh, deciduous and we've got some pine trees. Um, I could even make them autumn fall trees if we wanted. Do some winter trees would be kind of cool. I think I'm going to go with just uh, some pine trees to start. All right, let's see how big they are. Those are huge. We don't need trees that big. Let's see what 50% does. Okay. That's still a little big for what I want. Uh, I think let's go to 35. All right, cool. All right, so you can see I've got my area tool on, and I can actually change the density a little bit too. So let's look at that. That's what our density is going to look like in there. So let's actually start off dense and work our way down. Okay. And we actually. We'll start up here. I'm going to leave a little room because remember, I got to put in some farms and stuff around here. But I think we can start up here and we could just start painting this um, pretty easily. And you can see it's coming on pretty thick. It's a nice, dense forest for us, for our campaign. There's our little temple. see it's automatically going to go behind some of the other features because the way the map layers work. I think that's starting to look pretty cool. Let's get all through the mountains here. We don't want to paint over my wizard tower too much. We want it to kind of stand out. Okay, I think it's looking good. And what we're going to do is once we're done getting kind of the, the, the thick part down, we're going to start putting um, a little less dense layer. So I'm going to crank down my density here. I'm going to do it about half. Actually, let's go in between. Let's go about 50. And you can see already it's it's not as dense as it was. So now we can kind of start breaking it up a little bit to show that, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of forest, but it's not like crazy. We could do some of that within these mountains here too. There we go. It's looking good. Uh, that this will be like our little logging town let's give it a water source how about that i'm gonna go back to my um, masking tool where i'm gonna subtract and i'm gonna i'm gonna crank this up a little bit more we're gonna draw a pond slash lake here for our friends and we'll have it fed by oops that's gonna be a little thick so let's go back to our four Kind of the same size. Actually, we'll even go smaller now. Let's go down to like a two. We're going to have this come from the mountains. There we are. We'll have this around here. Maybe this even runs into the Brimsy Mega Delf, too. There we go. Cool. Let's bump this up a little bit more. All right, cool. This little nub was driving me crazy. All right. All right. 
Um, okay, cool. Let's go back to our stamp tool and draw some more uh, forests. We'll bring down the density even more this time. Start doing it on the other side of the river. You need to be careful. Some of the um, the trees sometimes go on the other side of the uh, or go on top of water and it ends up looking kind of goofy. So you got to be cognizant of that when you're drawing. Um, when I start using my masking tool, it's not so bad because it'll um, work within the layers like I want it. Now we can start doing kind of more spares. This. All right. We'll go down one more and then we're going to switch to deciduous real quick. All right. So I think in this place has some pretty intense um, winters. I think that would be really cool. I like a nice forested area. So we still got a lot of green in here. It's broken up with a little bit of forest. Let's go back. Let's go open our stamp tool back up. Open our catalog. We're going to switch to deciduous right now. Size should already be where we want it to be. We can uh, crank the density back up a little bit. And we're going to put some into our uh, coniferous forests. Not to be confused with carnivorous. The forest won't eat you. <laughs> this means it's got pine trees. That's a thick forest day. All right, so here's what we got so far. Looking cool. All right, let's put in some farmlands. Let's see, farm. Uh, maybe it's field. I think that's what I need. Is it crop? There we go. Okay, cool. Put in some crops. These you can't draw in multiple layers like the other ones, and that's okay. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, not going to do crops. Let's do. Uh, let's just do it all with the texture. All right, so let me go back so I can see what I did here. So this paintbrush tool opens up your texture, and it gives you like a nice brush where you can put in different textures. I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to go with grass to start. Let's close this out. I'm going to make a nice, big, broad brush here. So I'm going to go up to like 150 or so, and then I'm going to start at the top and drawing an under layer here and this is going to connect directly to the um the the earth tones it's going to paint over that and it won't go on water because the the masking layers are basically protecting each other from getting painted on top um and with water you can also paint on top of it too especially if you want to show like deepness and different stuff like that all right so you can see the greens coming in. It's looking pretty good. Um, that might, you know, what? I'm just going to kind of give it a nice big brush over, and then I'm going to go back and then paint in. And it doesn't have to be perfect because, like, the different variations of textures can make stuff look really, like, kind of cool and uh, natural, especially like if it's a well tread area or, you know, there's a lot of farmlands and stuff. And you can see now it's really coming together as like a real map now that we got some color in there. All right, there's our first kind of layer. Let's go ahead and find kind of a, a one that would work well with farms. Um, you got a ton of different textures too. It's really cool. Let's see what we got. Let's get something kind of more tan. Land textures, yellow. I think yellow is what I want. Let's do yellow here. I'm just going to bop. So there's yellow. That's saying, hey, there's uh, some farms here. Put some around there too. Do some for our mining village. Um, we'll do that over there. All right, cool. And then here for our, our little town. All right, cool. So we get some of that. Let's get some uh, other fun colors in here. 
Um, let's put a swamp somewhere. So swamp's really easy to do with like a um, kind of an uglier patch like this. I think um, a swamp would go really well like uh, probably in this area here. So let's darken this up a bit. I think that looks cool. A kind of a lower lying area and we can actually put in some swamp trees too which would be really cool. So let's put in a couple of those so we really know that it's swamp. Swamp's always good, of course, for like a nice little, uh, you know, you want to go fight some bollywugs or whatever. <laughs> let's get our density way down. I don't want it being too much. In our area brush tool, we're going to shrink too. There we go. Just a couple, just to let us know, hey, that's a swamp, okay? Um, let's get a little bit more color variety in our uh, brush tool. Mm, I'm going to outline our coasts a little bit with some of uh, this more sandy type. Just real light across it. Just kind of edge it. I think that's good. How are we looking? Pretty cool so far. All right, all right. I'm really digging this. Okay, I think that's all I really want to do. It doesn't have to be... I'm not winning any awards here, <laughs> and I'm hardly a cartographer, but I think this is definitely will at least um, kind of get what we're going for. Okay, last but not least, let's put in some roads, and we should be good to go. Uh, we have a bridge here, so we'll make sure to get that. Let's draw... There's a road leading to the main area there. We'll have a road lead down here to this place. And you can see it automatically does like a nice little dotted line. We'll say this uh, old abandoned area doesn't really have a road. Um, I think, let's take a look at our map of St. John real quick to see what we gotta do in terms of roads. It's really our only basis point that we need all right, there's a road that goes up that way. So we'll need to put that in. And I think that's all for our roads, right? So um, St. John has a road that goes north. And we'll say this one. Whoops. And we'll have one that goes through this little area of forest here and meets up with the road to St. John. And let's get a couple bridges. Remember the humble bridge in St. John? So we gotta put that guy, that's a big bridge. It's like a 500 foot span. Let's see what we got. I think just something simple. Uh, are there any like wooden bridges? Nah, not really, huh? stone bridges all right so let's shrink this guy down a bunch i think a 10 is all we really need there eh. oh my goodness i can also up it with my w key w and s keys <laughs> maybe i'm too lazy but you see they got a little different direction for each one so I think that's pretty pretty awesome all right how's that looking very cool very cool um this abandoned temple we can leave we don't have to give a road to uh there's another village over there you know what let's put a let's connect a road to that too um we'll have it go this way in a way it gives us a good excuse for maybe stopping at the other side of a area and then we'll actually have it wander off the map in fact let's get another one that goes this way off the map too into the uh into the unknown i don't want to put it over the river like that so i'm going to redo i'm going to control z that we'll just draw it like this i'm going to go back to my stamp tool grab my stone bridges again Put those in real quick. Very cool. Very cool. All right. And one more. 
and I want to rotate it a little bit, which I can do by hitting my um, bracket keys. Let's zoom out and see how we're doing. Awesome. Looking very cool. Okay, one last big thing to do before we get done with this episode. Let's go to our back to our textures, and I want some lighter colors for my ocean. So let's see. I think I got some ocean textures here. Um, let's do let's do something darker. So I'm going to grab this darker shade. I'm going to click BG because that'll go onto the water, and then I'm going to draw onto the water to make it a little bit darker. I can actually soften. I can take down the opacity too to kind of build in some different layers. There we go. Ah, oh, that looks great. Let's scroll out. There we go. This is um, La Breca. All right, the starts of La Breca. Make a couple other modifications and I think I'm done. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching this episode. I uh, hope you had fun watching it as much as I did. Uh, I had messing around with it. And uh, next time I'm going to show you how to export different versions so that we can get it into uh, Roll20 and start using it. And then we're going to put some labels on it and stuff too in Photoshop. So it should be fun. Anyways, see you next time. Like and subscribe. And uh, check out my stuff at patreon.com forward slash DMDave. Later.